Hi, Tom Richardson for New England Boating. Well, it is late October and that means it's Tatog time here in southern New England. From Cape Cod down through Long Island Sound, Tatog are hanging out over the inshore rock piles and wrecks and it is a great time to pursue them. You can see we've got an incredible weather window today. It is flat calm and we're going to go out on Buzzards Bay, try to hit some of my favorite Tatog spots and see if we can catch a couple of white chinners. Before embarking on your Tatog excursion, take a look at the tide charts because Tatog, like many species of fish, prefer moving water. So you want to have some kind of current. Head out, launch the boat at slack tide, get to your spot, and then you've got a nice six hour window to catch fish. Now, there's a lot of popular tog spots and it, that get fished over pretty heavily by other boats and party boats and that sort of thing. But you're better off just kind of finding, coming out, looking at a chart, finding a piece of, a small piece of bottom, like a rocky bottom or, or hump or pinnacle or wreck, and, and, and going and exploring those places on your own, because they usually hold more and bigger fish, because those, those, those popular spots get fished out pretty quickly. So let's talk about the type of gear I like to use for, uh, for shallow water to tog fishing. Um, I've got a um, offshore angler ocean master reel a level wind reel it's light duty uh, filled with 30 pound test braided line I like braided line over monofilament because it allow it's much more sensitive and it's less prone to the effects of current it really lets you feel when your sinkers tapping bottom keep a it allows you to keep a more vertical uh, line st straight up and down uh, from the boat to the bottom and that helps you catch more fish uh, I've got a, an offshore angler gold cup inshore rod, and this is rated for uh, 15 to 30 pound test. Real light graphite rod, very sensitive. And now, for the terminal rig, I like to keep it pretty simple. Some, some Tatog fishermen like to use two hook rigs and that stuff. I like to keep it real simple. They're, all, they're a lot easier to tie and a lot easier to manage. On the end of the, the 30 pound test braided line, I tie on a small to mid-sized barrel swivel doesn't really matter it's not important for tatog fishing how how um how visible the, the the barrel swivel is and then i tie on i've got a leader that is um, about three to four feet of 60 50 to 60 pound test monofilament leader you don't need to use fluorocarbon in this case just uh, regular monofilament nylon monofilament will be just fine i tie about a foot Above the, uh, the the base of the leader, I tie in a small, small short dropper loop, maybe about two inches two inches long. And on the dropper loop, I attach through a loop to loop knot system a two foot section of fifty to sixty pound monofilament leader with the octopus hook. This is a five aught. Gamakatsu offset octopus hook, my favorite type of hook for, for fishing for Tatog. Very sharp, very strong. Then finally at the base of the leader, at the very end of the leader, I tie in a small loop. Now the surgeon's loop allows, allows you to change sinkers very quickly um, to account for different current conditions. So you just basically take the loop, put it through the eye of the bank sinker, slip it over the base of the bank sinker, and cinch it up. Um, the size of the bank sinker you end up using is going to depend on the strength of the current. So always bring a wide assortment with you. You want to be able to you you want to use the the lightest sinker you can, yet still hold bottom. That's because the lighter sinker will let you feel the ta the the bites of a tatog eating your bait. You use too heavy a sinker, it makes it harder. To feel the bites and also harder to set the hook. So, so we're talking baits for Tatog. What kind of bait do you bring? Well, can't beat a green crab. Green crabs are readily available at most uh, bait and tackle sh shops along the coast and they're also pretty cheap. So how much do you need to bring? That's a good question because it depends on how many people are fishing and how long you're going to fish for. Typically though, if I'm fishing for a tide, a six hour period, I like to bring a gallon of green crabs. That way if I'm on a hot bite, I don't have to worry about running out of crabs. Plus, if you're going to go fishing, then if you have extra crabs, if you have crabs left over, you can put them in the refrigerator or in a perforated uh, five-gallon bucket and stick it in the water with a with some a, a fish carcass, and they'll do just fine for a long, long time. That way, you always have baits ready to go. 
anyways, green crabs come in a lot of different sizes. These happen to be sort of a smallish size green crab. So when I fish them, I'll cut them in half. Okay, so now we're ready to hook the crab. We've removed the legs. We put the hook of the, of the octopus hook through one socket of the leg. And then out the back is just fine. Sometimes you like to, sometimes if you can, thread the hook point out through another leg socket. But that's just fine right there. That's a great way to hook a crab. That'll stay on there. And you've got lots of juicy crab goo coming out of it that will draw the biggest tatog. So we're lowering it down slowly to the bottom. Helps if you thumb the spool as you're lowering the, the bait to the bottom to prevent the rig from tangling. And you can see we're right fishing right next to our marker buoy, so we're right on the high spot. So I'm gonna just put the reel in gear here. With the tog, you'll feel a, a slight rap at first when the fish is kind of crunching up the bait, breaking it up, and then a heavier tug when the fish has actually got the got the bait back in its crushers, and that's when you want to set the hook. It's Definitely takes some feel though, and that's why braided line definitely helps. You really want to make sure that you're when you're when you're tapping bottom that you're feeling the rocks on the bottom. And you can do this with a sensitive rod and braided line like we have here. I can feel when I'm on, over mud, and I can feel when it's tapping a rocky bottom. If you're over mud, you're not going to find a lot of tatog. Means you didn't anchor correctly. Keep the rod. It's important to keep the rod tip kind of low to the water so you have room to set the hook. As soon as you feel that second big hit. Oh, I just missed him. Well, there you have it. Buzzards Bay Tatog fishing in the fall. Tatog fishing at its best. Uh, get out here on a beautiful October or November day and uh, get into some of this action and uh, get into some of this great eating too. Tasty fish Tatog. Great way to end the season. I'm Tom Richardson for New England Boating. Thanks for watching. Nice. <laughs>